Bread of life sent down from glory. Many things you were upon the earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory, many things you were upon the earth. A holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word. Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have. In you, you are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Ain't you born, but on that tree, you died to save humanity. Oh. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Ain't you born, but on that tree, you died to save humanity. Oh, you are the living word. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Many things you were honored, a holy king, a carpenter. Be still and know that I am your God. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Singing, I, I love, I love you, Lord. Singing, I, I love you, Lord. Singing, I. I love all oh, you, you, Lord, oh, I, I love you, Lord. Oh, it reaches, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. For your glory, God, is what our hearts For your glory, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For your glory, yeah, 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 yeah. I will do anything just 
just to see you. Oh, 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 oh. to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. For your glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will do anything. Just to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And behold you as my king. For your glory. I will do anything. Just to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And behold you as my king. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. For your glory oh yes oh yes oh yes yeah i will do anything just to see you and behold you as my king Yes, I'll cherish the old rugged cross and exchange it. Oh, and I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my glory. At last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Yes, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. To my glory, at last I lay down, and I will cling to the old rugged cross, oh, 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 oh. and exchange it someday. For a crown. Yes, I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling. To the old rugged cross. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And exchange it someday for a crown. Yes, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. 
Till my trophies at last I lay down and I will cling to the old rugged cross, yeah, 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 and exchange it someday for a crown 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 hallelujah we love you jesus with angels all around hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Since the harvest does not have any restraint to it, and it doesn't have any stoppage to it. And you have to esteem the harvest anointing high in your consciousness all throughout the day. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in covenant with you for you to experience rewards and promotions and graduations constantly. Don't leave your harvest angel unemployed. Don't leave your harvest angel unemployed. Give your harvest angels constant task because you're constantly sowing yourself into the spirit. The word of God says something powerful. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap of the spirit everlasting life. Sowing to the spirit Gives your harvest angels an assignment every time. So saints, when we see Apostle Paul, when we see him mentoring Timothy, Apostle Paul is activating har harvest angels. And then when you see Timothy submitting himself to Apostle Paul, Timothy is activating harvest angels. The harvest angels... They have work assignments every time you're doing the work of the spirit. When the spirit is able to work in you and work through you, the harvest angels have new agendas. They have new assignments. You want your harvest angels to always be working. Let them constantly be able to fulfill assignments in your life so your life can grow, so you can have the things that you're supposed to have and see the things that you're supposed to see. The children of Israel saw the glory of one wealth transference, but they didn't see the big bang wealth transference, which I want you to catch. You don't want to experience God at one plateau and not experience the next dimension of it. The harvest angels, they revealed to the children of Israel what God could do. They saw it. 
The wealth transference happened. The Egyptians was hypnotized by the power of the spirit of God. They saw one aspect of it, but they didn't see the next aspect of it. They didn't let the harvest keep on coming. They didn't let the money just keep on coming. Oh my gosh. Just to think about that. The children of Israel, they press pause on their prosperity. Whoa. They press pause on their prosperity. Your future is hidden in sowing urges. Your future is hidden in sowing urges. The Holy Spirit will give you sowing urges, not only with money, but with self. Because for you to study the word, you have to invest self. For you to operate in excellency, you have to invest self. For you to walk in maturity and be void of wickedness, it requires you to sow yourself. So the sowing of self is a part of the sowing of money. Meaning that you can't sow money all the time. You can't sow money all the time. There's 24 hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can't sow money all the time. So what is the sowing that God wants you to be a cheerful giver in, in other arenas of your life? Being a cheerful giver in your attitude, being a cheerful giver in your responses. Saints, when I'm not sowing money, I'm sowing myself. The grace of sowing does not operate just with finances. It operates with faith. It operates with freedom because even freedom is the sowing of yourself into what God taught you. Freedom is the sowing of yourself into what God taught you. So when you're free, that means that you are operating the way that God created you to operate. When you're bound, you're operating the way that Satan wants you to operate. So even freedom is the sowing of self. When someone is wearing a sewing anointed, they will not just be sewing finances. They will be sewing their body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is their reasonable service. Remember, in this life, you can't sew finances all the time. Like, Every minute of the day, you can't sow finances. So there, there is another aspect to sowing that you must engage for the harvest to be able to keep on coming to you. When someone successfully sows money into your man of God, that's a sign to teach you the word. That's how sowing works. When you sow money into your man of God, that's a sign to teach you the word. You have to find out what am I supposed to sow to that same man of God after I sold the money? You sow attentiveness. You sow hunger. You sow faithfulness. That means that you are constantly operating in the word that they taught to you. That's what faithfulness is. Faithfulness to a man of God, your soul is uh, being obedient to the word that was taught to you by them. Whenever the spirit of God is giving you a sowing anointing, he's showing you how to keep on sowing all the time. So the time that you're not sowing money, you're sowing respect. Like I never raised my voice at my soul. I'll never raise my voice at my soul, nor will I ever contradict my soul. When Dr. Mike Murdoch is talking, if he says something, I won't say, well, I got a revelation on that. And I think it's like this. Never. Because that's what respect does. Respect is not combative, is not in competition. It's in submission all the time. And it's always a peacemaker. A peacemaker is someone that's whole. And so they can operate in wholeness every time. 
A peacemaker is someone that is whole. So they never have to contradict what the authority says because they are at peace with God. When you're not at peace with God, it'll show in your attitude, in your behavior, in your responses, in your words. But when you're at peace with God, why would you find contradiction? Because you're, when you're at peace with God, that means that I am at peace. I'm at peace. Even though the storm is raging. <laughs> That's Vicky Yoy's song. <laughs> But, but, but when, 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 when you have a sowing anointing on you, you'll find what to sow all the time to your soul. Because saints, when Melchizedek didn't receive seed from Abraham, Melchizedek received attentiveness from Abraham. He received servanthood from Abraham. He received, um, humility from Abraham. Let me look at, let's go here to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. No, let's go to verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, that means that he was an adult, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Let's go to verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Some of you are, you need to mark that down because you have heard people say that the pleasures of sin for a season, now you know where it is in the word. That's uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. So now you know where it is in the word. So if somebody say, where is that in the Bible? Pleasures of sin for a season. You can say it's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Now let's go to verse 26. And this is what I want to show you. He said, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches, than the treasures in Egypt. I, I want to say this real slow. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches. Than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect. Unto the recompense. Of the reward. <sighs> Boy I could preach six hours on this. Man. Saints, you ain't never heard this, man. The Bible says that he esteemed the reproach of Christ. Greater riches. Now, saints, let me, let, I, let, let me teach this underneath my mantle, right? Look at this. Where was Christ in Moses' day? Let me shock you. Moses was Christ. Who was being reproached? Moses. <laughs> Money coming to me now. No, 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 no. There wasn't another Christ. Where was Christ? Did you see Christ in the Old Testament? Where? But since you notice, this didn't say Jesus. Because Christ is an office that God comes down in, in every generation. Feneragle Riza Lahanos, Angle Nigo Hosiliene, Creniva, Vale Procreveniva, Crananzo, Movre Creniva, Calazo Novia, Pala Procranze. Saints, the Bible said that Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ. Where was Christ? Did we see him walking in Jerusalem? We saw Moses. Saints, watch this here. 
Moses was operating as Jesus and Pharaoh was operating as who? Pharaoh was operating as Satan. And guess what? The children of Israel was in the kingdom of Satan when they were serving Pharaoh. And Moses came as a impartation of pre-Jesus. And he came to save his people from their sin. Now watch this people of God. Moses He was the Christ in Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He is Christ. So saints, Moses was on the Mount Sinai. And the glory of God came, right? But Jesus was on the mountain and he was transfigured. And he heard a voice say, this is my son, hear him. They thought it was thunder. If you don't understand, thunder is the voice of God. When you hear thunder shouting out in your state, your city, you know that's the voice of God. That's why I told you that we will have booming thunderstorms, which has already happened. My prophecy already came to pass. I told you before it happened, it doesn't happen. People even died on a highway as a result of the thunderstorms. Trucks crashed into each other off of the turbulence of the thunderstorms. I told you this way before it happened, correct? I told you this. I told you way before that we was gonna have uh, missiles flying in the spring. North Korea, uh, what's that? South Korea, North Korea, wherever they, wherever they is. They done sent out missiles, tried out their missiles. Russia still sending missiles. They still showing missiles. And remember, I had told you that we was going to still have that war going on into the spring. Remember I told you? And look, the war is still going on right now. <laughs> now, since when does spring start? I think I told you that in February. Why am I saying this to you? I'm saying this to you because I want you to recognize the office of Christ. When Christ's office is in operation in the earth, God is coming to anoint you through a man's body. And that office of Christ is to end your crisis. See, let me, let me just show you something. Without the Christ and his dimension flowing in your life, you're going to have crisis. So let me just tell you something. When you stuck on drinking, smoking, lying, distractions, weakness, missing God, failing God, all these things are crisis. It's not just when you experience sickness in your body, disease in your body, or issues in your finances. That the crisis really starts in the soul. Remember, crisis is an inward war that Satan is basically winning. You need to write that down. Crisis is an inward war that Satan is basically winning. Another definition is crisis is a war that Satan appears to be winning. One, Satan is winning. Two, Satan appears to be winning. And that's adversity. You see what I'm saying? Adversity is where it appears like Satan is winning. I mean that you don't got much, but you know you created for much. It looks like Satan winning. But you say they're not winning. You winning because you're following the Lord to come out. The same way. It looked like you're sick. 
but you're obeying God. So your obedience is activating the blessing in manifestation so your body will receive the results. Or it look like your mind is going to become insane because of what come up against you, traumatizing situation, but you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that is a realm in crisis where it appears like Satan is winning. There's a realm in crisis where Satan is winning. Now, the realm in crisis where Satan is winning is only when you reject the Christ and his office. I want you to listen to me clearly. This is the word of the Lord. I said when Satan is winning, this realm of crisis is where you reject Christ in his office. So when Satan appears to be winning, you're receiving Christ now. You're receiving Christ's office. But when Satan is winning, you reject Christ and his office. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26 says, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches. I want you to see this. Moses said, I rather operate in my office, the Christ office. And even though I'm going to be persecuted, I rather stay in my Christ office because greater riches is in this. You're not hearing me. You're not hear you you're not hearing what I'm saying. You oh no 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 you, you didn't catch what I just said. Moses said, I rather operate in my Christ office, even if I lose people. I rather operate in my Christ office, even if people start looking at me with an evil eye and saying saying crazy about this person. He said, I rather operate in the reproach of this office. Because there's greater riches in this. See, I want you to catch this. Some of you all, you may never be a multimillionaire. You know why? Because you not only reject the Christ office that comes to you in the form of a person, you reject your own Christ office. You don't know who you be, baby. If you did know who you was, you, if you, 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 if you did know who you was and what you was working with, you wouldn't miss. But I want you to catch this. When you identify the Christ office that is coming to you, through a person and the Christ office that is working in you for you to become who God made you to be, you will receive the harvest of greater riches. This is the spirit of revelation, by the way. You ain't never heard this word before. I remember I used to preach sometimes and they, they, sometimes people would pop up there. I was, you know, my pastor, my, my pastor was saying something like, your pastor wasn't saying this. <laughs> baby, 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 don't, baby, don't call it. No, baby, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, baby. Don't, don't, don't. You, 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 that's why you're listening to me, man. You listen to me because you, you hear something that you ain't in your pastor. They don't do my, my pastor was teaching on something like this. No, no, he wasn't teaching. Saints, Moses said, I'm going to operate in my office because this is greater riches than anything that Satan is attempting to get me to betray God on. I refuse to betray God on anything because I know what is coming to me as a result of me operating in my office. I will not be tricked by my feelings. I will not be tricked by bad behavior, bad words, bad thoughts. I will not be tricked by bad conduct because I have a revelation of the greater riches. Saints, what if I told you that the reason why people don't enter greater riches is because they're rejecting the Christ office that is coming to them in a person. And they're rejecting the Christ office that they are supposed to learn to operate in as a person. 
There's two folds of the Christ office. There's someone anointed in a body to talk to you. And then there is an anointing that you receive to talk to them. And when you communicate with them, and you allow them to communicate with you. Boom. Greater riches. Bow. Greater riches. Gra. Greater riches. The greater riches is not until there is a receptivity of the Christ office. Now watch what uh, Moses also did. The Bible says, for he had respect. See, you can't get here until you have respect. <laughs> oh, this, I'm not switching those scriptures, boy. Go read this in the Bible. Saying there was this big old girl back in the, in the day. Her name was Iris. I know she's still, she probably still alive, probably. But she was a big old girl, boy, and she loved me. Them big women love me. Maybe I should have, I should have, I should have. I'm thinking about, I'm about to look at bigwoman.com and find me a big woman. She was a big old girl, big woman. Always loved me, boy. Big woman always loved me. What is with that? I got to find that. I never asked the Lord that. Why, why did a big woman like me so? She's a big old girl. She loved me. And saying she, you know what she used to do? She used to bring me snacks. Iris used to be eating. And she, she says, I, I brought you some. And, and saints, my mama taught me not. My mama, 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 my mama say, my mama say, my, 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 and since every time I saw her, when she walked past me, it smelled like food because she had that food in her backpack. And, and since um, she used to bring me some. Now, I, I, I would I would uh, I would I, I wouldn't reject it. But at the same token, I wouldn't eat it. But uh, the tam scripturals and the temptationicals was increasing within my 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 my, my loins and my poems. And my poems, and and all of the the in in the testosterone will be in. And see, saints, when, there's a different type of love life that you can operate with a big woman. Like y'all don't have to enter each other. You don't have to do that. Y'all could just eat together, and it's there's so much joy in it. I mean. All y'all got to do is just, in, in saints, big woman, they operate different. They'll feed you. They'll feed you food. They'll feed you. She wanted to feed me. Iris. Iris. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you. But, but Iris had a problem. You know what? Iris had a problem that she would always scream. I don't know why she was screaming. I think that uh, she had a favorite meal. It made her scream a lot. It was a screamish scream. It was a screamish scream. Um... And she had a screaming scream, so she used to scream a lot. So when Iris was ready to, uh, when she would talk to me, sometimes she would come to me and be like, hey. Iris, what happened to you? What happened to you? And she was like, Ugh. now, now that I look back at it, I don't know all that she was um, digesting. She was having throat problems. I don't know what was going on there. Um, but I know that she tried to get me a couple of times, but I was I was connected to my virginity. I had made up in my mind that I wasn't going to be getting uh no behind. You see what I'm saying? And and and, and so um Iris, Iris, she she wanted to, you know, you know, she she wanted to feed me, but she wanted to eat me at the same time. So uh sometimes when I would you know, I would eat my own snack that I had and she offered me her snack while I'm eating my snack. I'll look over at her. She'll get a little close, but it was like she wanted to eat me beside the snack. So I, I had to hide my fingers and my palms. <laughs> I, 
I had to hide my fingers in my palms. I had to put my hands different places. I had to, you know, and, and one thing that I noticed with Iris was this. Iris faithfully wanted to sow into me, even though she didn't see me requesting anything from her. I never told Iris, hey, Iris, you need to bring me a snack, too. You need to bring me some food, too. But in her brain, she had purposed in her heart that this little boy is sore for me to sow into. And saints, one thing that I started recognizing was this, that even if somebody didn't like me or something like that, I will always see Iris. She'll go up to them and say, you don't know who he is. You need to stop that. That's not funny. You don't need to talk about him because you don't know who he is. I would see Iris say that. And she didn't know I would see her say that. Now, saints, listen to me very clearly. Watch this here. What I started recognizing was this. That the, the sowing that Iris had purpose in her heart to do towards me. Also, it moved her without any effort into respect. She, she felt a need to be defensive. She felt an urgency to be protective. And me and her wasn't in a relationship, according to me saying, you my girlfriend, Iris, I'm your boyfriend, Iris. But Iris was in a relationship because in her mind, she related to the fact that this will be something that I could sow into Joshua. So when I see Joshua, this is how I relate to him. I want to see him happy. That's that was what she was thinking. So when she was making her meal, Iris loved her fried chicken. She loved her collard green. She loved her banana pudding. But she also fell in love with the idea of honor, which brought her behavior into respect without her even knowing it. Because honor, which is sowing, and respect, they are in a joint union with each other. So when someone receives the sowing anointing, you not only receive an anointing to honor your man of God with money, but you receive an anointing to respect your man of God with words, respect your man of God with decisions. That means that you respect the man of God. Uh, Jonathan not only honored David, but he respected David to the degree that he would not speak words with Saul against David. And so his words even was attempting to protect David from death and protect David from assaults. And even though Saul had set up traps and booby traps all across the city, he, he was respecting David even when David wasn't there because Honor and respect, they are joint partners. And you can't have the one without the other because they are intermingled. Have you ever seen those twins that come out together and they're joined together? There are twins in the earth. When they come out, their shoulders are connected together. Well, saints, that's what happens when you operate in honor, when you operate in sowing. There's a joint venue, a, a venture rather. There's a joint venture between you and respect. And so when you're not sowing money, which is honor, you're so respect which is servanthood, your soul uh, pleasure, which is uh, respect, your soul loyalty, which is respect, your soul faithfulness, which is respect, your soul self-control, which is respect, your soul praise, which is respect. Saints, you notice When I was on the line with Dr. Mike Murdoch, you notice I, I really zone out at one point. And I really don't care if somebody think I'm a wussy sucker, whatever. You notice I praise Dr. Mike Murdoch. Boldly, publicly. I mean like this, you can never wave this video ever. 
You notice that, right? You notice that I was praising him? And you notice how I used the time talking to bring honor to his name and respect to his name? Here we are talking about the Holy Spirit. I could try to release all the revelation, but I gather everything into proportion to respect him. I gather the moment to bring respect and fear and reverence to him. Because honor is a joint partner with respect. And when you're not sowing money, you're supposed to be sowing your words of respect. You're supposed to be sowing your deeds of respect. You're supposed to be sowing relationships of respect. That means that if somebody not connected with Dr. Mike Murdoch, you're never going to see this young man connected to them. Never. And saints, that's why I love people that, uh, I love people that love Dr. Mike Murdoch, but I, I, I be real, I be real, uh, I be real isolated because people change. And so the only way that you can protect your life when you're connected to your man of God is stay connected to them. Stop trying to get connected to their wife, their children, their personal assistant. Don't try to get connected to them. Stay connected to the person because that's where the safety is. Because when the people allow Satan to fill their hearts. Saints, don't you think that everybody that was a friend with Ananias, don't you think that they had trouble when they saw Ananias come against Peter? They had trouble. But that's why you keep your eyes on Peter. So when Ananias let Satan fill his heart. But saints, this is why I operate by. So saints, when I go in Dr. Mike Murdoch place, you're not going to see me having just casual conversations with people. I'm nice. I'm generous. But my mouth is shut. I'm not stuck up. I don't be disrespectful. I'll smile with you. I'll be nice to you. But we're not going to be on the phone talking. I'm not going to be texting you. I'm not going to be having private conversations with you. You know why? Because the day that Satan fills your heart, I can still go to Dr. Mike Murdoch with confidence and know that I've been faithful to him and know that I've had commitment to him. And I don't have to worry about who falls away, who turns against, because I myself am untouched by the devil. Saints, what I'm teaching you on here is the word of the Lord. And as I stand as a prophet and apostle of God, if you use these words, which I'm speaking to you, you'll not only enter into abundant life in this life, but you'll enter into eternal life forevermore. You'll spend your future with God Almighty that breathed his breath into you this very day. But if you reject these words in which I say to you, there is a hell fire waiting for you. The secret to life. Is that God comes down in a body and he appears to you before you get to heaven. Why you think he going to let your cuckoo for Cocoa Puff self come into his heaven if you rejected him on earth? He's smart. He's smart. Since you notice the children of Israel got swallowed into hell. Why did God have so much confidence in his decision? Because they didn't reject him in the body. So why are he going to let them come to heaven? We don't need prayer. We don't need fasting. We don't need nobody saying no song. We don't need none of that. God said, oh, you don't receive me. I'm right here in your face now. Well, I'm going to bring you into forevermore. Because you going to do worse. We're going to have Lucifer part three. <laughs> world, 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 uh, uh, heaven, world, heaven war two. We don't want heaven war two. Because that's what Lucifer did. So what God does, he gives you the body right now. And everything that you say that you are, you have a chance to be that to the body. And saints, here's what I'm telling you. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26. The greater riches is in this. Fulfilling your altar to honor and respect your man of God equals greater riches. Fulfilling your altar 
To honor and respect your man of God is greater riches. They are the office of Christ. But you have an office of Christ. And that office of Christ is to discern them. Remember, Christ was inside of John the Baptist saying, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. He was filled with the Holy Ghost, John the Baptist, from birth. So Christ was inside of John the Baptist, proclaiming himself to himself. So John the Baptist was talking to Christ with the words that Christ wanted to hear. So not only was Christ, Jesus, appearing to John the Baptist, but Christ was John the Baptist ministering worship to Jesus. Receive your Christ office so that your eyes could be open to your Christ. You'll never have no crisis. You'll never have no crisis. You'll never have no crisis. If your eyes is open while you're operating in your Christ office. Remember, hell is a place, it's a world where people didn't know who they are, nor know who God was. Hell is a world of confused people that was deceived out of who they were, the image of God. The minute that you respect your Christ anointing that was sent to you, that is the clear indication that you respect your own personal Christ anointing that was imparted to you. So Saint Joshua was the only one that excelled in worshiping and respecting his Christ which was Moses. Joshua was the only one. Miriam had a chance. Korah had a chance. And they chose to reject their Christ's office towards their Christ. So saints in the word of God, we see Miriam, Korah, we see Pharaoh, we see all the people that rejected their Christ's office, the spies. But then we see Joshua and Joshua, what is he doing? He's in the presence of God. The Bible said Moses went, go check on the people. And Joshua stayed in the tabernacle. He stayed where the glory was. Because he's identifying the Christ that he is. So that when Christ shows up to him, He'll talk to Christ out of his Christ realm. He'll pleasure Christ out of his Christ realm. He will worship Christ out of his Christ realm. He will respect Christ out of his Christ realm. Since it was all hidden in him walking in his Christ office. He knew who he was. And guess what, saints? Let me show you something powerful. Moses was Christ. Joshua was Yeshua. So it was Jesus Christ. Christ was Moses. Christ didn't enter into the promise. Joshua entered into the promise. So it was Jesus Christ. 